So my name is Ricardo, and first of all, uh, thanks for attending my session. I know you have the choice, you could be on the other duty, but you are here, appreciate that. Also a huge thanks for the people organizing the event and giving me the uh, opportunity to speak. I'm very really excited to be here, so again, welcome, thanks uh, to be in my session. I work uh, on the Windows and System Center uh, division, more specifically on a team called the Enterprise Engineering Center. And at the EEC, what we do is we host customer engagements and bring customers on site to execute proof of concepts on the next version of uh, Microsoft Server Workloads. We work closely with customers, we work closely with OEMs. Uh, the majority of the OEMs have an, actually an office in our building. Uh, and we bring together the, the trio of uh, services, I usually call. Uh, the customer with their needs and their workloads, uh, the people that actually write the software at Microsoft, and the people that actually create the hardware for that software to run. And, and with this uh, trio, we are able to execute successful uh, proof of concepts that basically guide our customers um, to adopt the future uh, releases of uh, our server workloads. So today, what I, what I want to talk with you is uh, about how can we use PowerShell to accomplish uh, device management operations. And uh, what I'm going to show to you is not a product. Uh, it's actually a uh, sample that I created and I host at uh, TechNet Gallery. It's been six or seven months. Uh, this is a working in progress, so it's now like a finalized product. And uh, my goal to show this to you is, as IT administrators, we probably face the same challenges I face in my data center. I have a small data center, probably 400 machines. Uh, but we do run 24 hours by seven with customer workloads. And you know, we need to automate things. We need to deploy uh, systems on, on a massive scale. And obviously, automation is key. So what I'm going to show to you, you can download today. Maybe you can start using. So that's the first goal. Uh, of the session. The second goal is that's something I ask you is if you if what you see today is something that uh, you know you think is interesting. Uh, by the end of the session, I'm going to have my contacts up in the screen. Please shoot me an email. Say you know what I, I saw your presentation. I think it's interesting because this is actually an idea that we entertained for uh, a while, and, and, and you know it. This is valuable to customers. Maybe uh, this could be this could get more investments. Okay, good. Uh, so when we talk about device management, it, it's it's pretty much a topic that I don't think that many people uh, think about it because just because we do a, a great job, Windows do a great job, right? It's been Back in the day, you, you, you could say, I'm, I'm the specialist on installing drivers. Today, it just works, right? But sometimes, having a better understanding of how uh, the plug and play uh, infrastructure works and having the ability to maybe manually uh, force a driver or enable or, or disable a device may be something that uh, it could be useful. Uh, I think the bottom line is, what I'm going to show you today is not something that we're going to use every day. Uh, I understand that, I believe that, just because the Windows do a great job of managing devices and collecting data and all that. But there is still some areas where, you know, sometimes I bet you guys uh, get, like myself, like, okay, how can I automate this, right? And today, the main tool we use to do anything about devices is the device manager, MMC's network, which is great. There's a lot of information there. Uh, but the only drawback is it, it's, it's, a, it's a UI thing. Right? You, you cannot automate a uh, device manager. There are some alternatives, and I'm going to mention some of the alternatives. And at no point is my goal is to compare things. 
uh, I think the main goal of creating these combined plans uh, is to get the pieces that with other tools you have to get them manually. So uh, talking about alternatives, uh, the main alternatives that, that uh, come to my mind, and that's based on my experience, uh, the WMI uh, command line, you can get a lot of information about WMI through that. And obviously WMI exposes uh, some of the plugin implementing entities. Uh, that call, who uses that call here? Okay, that call is a command line tool to uh, install and Install drivers. Uh, it's available from download Microsoft.com. It's been it's been around for a while. Also, uh, PowerShell get WMI object, and you can get a lot of information about devices with the standard WMI classes. Right? If you do a query on if you get WMI object or Winter 2 PMP ST, uh, you you can grab most of the system devices. So, so that is some, that is some information there. Also, core info, uh, log core info, you can have a very good uh, understanding of the number of processors, board for processors, processor capabilities, and so on. And, and I totally believe you can create an automation based on these tools. I bet there are other tools around, uh, but I think the main drawback of this is. You need to parse uh, text output, uh, and basically you need to have all these uh, different tools running on your environment uh, in, in, uh, in order to gather data. And also, I think more importantly, that some there are some specific information about devices that are not exposed on the mind, that are not exposed to, to that. So uh, then that's when I got the need of writing something that could uh, address this. And what I came up with was a set of commandlets that I call device management commandlets. And, and, and I, I have a, one of the first warnings. I, I gave the first warning, which is what you're going to see is like a side project, so be prepared. The second warning is that I'm really bad at naming, okay? So yeah, the naming for this side project is device management commandlets. And I have a few commandlets, three obviously, of those names, like you know, you can enable and disable devices, you can enumerate devices, device drivers, uh, and also you can get the uh, new one uh, information. I'm going to go over the detail of those uh, in a bit. So, the main motivation uh, is to enable you to perform driver operation or a headless uh, setup. You have server core running, and you don't have device management, and now you need to start right. So that's a, that's one of the motivations. Uh, the other uh, is to be able to script uh, device lifecycle operations, enable de uh, device, disable device, uh, enumerate drivers, and so forth. And, and also, and, and this is actually the last bullet, and, and, and I promise I'm not going to spend it much time on that. And the last bullet was actually the key driver for this side project. You know, a few years ago, uh, I was uh, involved in some performance uh, optimization on large scale systems. And uh, specifically for NUMA, we, we need to get, gather some uh, NUMA locality information. And uh, for that, I, I, I had a hard time uh, finding tools to that. The key thing, uh, and the reason I mentioned Duma is that for the majority of the servers in the market today, if we are talking about single or, or, or dual socket systems, uh, Numa pretty much doesn't come into the picture. When you go into the multi-cell machines, the machines with uh, four sockets, eight sockets, or more, maybe 16 sockets, uh, Numa locality may impact uh, performance on some workloads. Main pack performance on SQL, main pack performance on IIS, uh, main pack performance on Hyper-D. And, and, and the reality is that the OS does a great job of managing uh, the NUMA utilization. This is something that you really don't notice if you don't want to. 
But for some specific workloads, you could benefit of knowing the hardware topology. More specifically, I want to know in which NUMA node a given network device is more closer to. And the reason for that is if I know this information and if my workload enables me to configure uh, a NUMA locality behavior, I can have the workload running on the same NUMA node where the network stack, stack runs, where the network driver runs, and this gives me a better performance. Okay? I really summarized a very long summary, but I, I wanted to mention because this was actually the ability to get at the hardware topology was the main driver for this group. Okay. Does this look familiar? The third warning, my cabling abilities are not the best also. <laughs> I mean it's not it's not nightmare, right? At least I have cables on the same color that is a color coding standard here. Okay. We all are IT administrators here, right? And we are all very bright, right? Okay, I have a question for you. Which network connection, when you right click on the network icon, which, which net, I, I see some smiles. <laughs> Funny, I'm not alone, thank you. I don't feel alone anymore. Which network connection, Ethernet 1, Ethernet 2, Ethernet 10, this particular port on this four port one we meet belongs to. Which one? <laughs> Come on. Bright people, IT administrators. Yeah. Get dash random. Good. I, I love that. Get dash random. Okay. I, I, I don't want to turn this presentation into how the, the enumeration of NICs happens. It's not the, 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 the topic here. But the reality is, uh, there is no way to speak that. Okay? And, and I don't want to, I'm not going on this subject, I'm not the person for that, just to make it clear. Okay? Now, actually, there is a way. And, and that's, that was the way I learned the hard way. You go to device manager, uh, you right click on my specific NIC, and you look for the location information, which is something like bus, uh, device, and instance, I think, okay? Uh, and, and, and if you are lucky, you have the PCI slot information. Now, with the PCI slot, you know, if you are lucky, your server has these slot numbers on the, on the, the server case, and, and, and you know which particular NIC uh, you are talking to. Great, but this is manual. You go to device manager to do that, right? Okay. Now, another question, and, and before I show the solution, uh, otherwise, you know, my session will be over. Um, like the top, the top picture, actually, uh, that particular machine, uh, it has three uh, I.O. Uh, hubs, okay? And if you call the OEM and, and, and say, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm having some, I like to extract the better performance of my HBA or of my 10 G, G, uh, G NIC. The OEM will basically tell you, you know what, move that particular NIC to slot 5 or slot 6, okay? Now, your server is on the data center. You are in your desk. And how can you tell in which of the slots that NIC is, right? So, so this is pretty much, goes back to that last, last bullet I mentioned, and this was the, the key uh, reason for this project. Okay, enough said. Uh, let's look at the demo. Okay, so this is uh, my server. <coughs> and yeah, 160 cores looks nice, right? I love it. I don't have much memory, only one terabyte, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's a great, it's a, a, a great, a, a great client, right? You can actually feature that. I can, I will not swap, I, but maybe I, I can allow you to do a RGB session to that. You know, okay. 
the device manager, and, and okay, you guys all know that, right? I'm, I'm not going to keep you to this before, but you know, if you, if you look here, you have like PCI 12.9, that's location, and then you have details, and this is actually, of course, in, in, in some scenarios, and I'm going to mention some of these scenarios, all these uh, properties that you see here, these are extended plug and play properties. Uh, these are, there are things here that correlate, correlate, for example, with registry settings, I'm going to show that later, that uh, in some scenarios uh, you can uh, optimize. But then it's all uh, UI, right? So let's uh, switch to PowerShell and let's import the module first. And again, this module is available online. I'm going to provide you the link for download. Please download. And, and these are the command lets that the, um, the module exports. So let's look at, actually, let's do this first. Okay. Uh, let's get a count of uh, all the devices on the system. Uh, we have 297 uh, devices. So I just buy a few measure out there. Thank you, Don. Now, okay, so let me get a better view of the devices on the system, okay? Uh, these are only the first 20 devices that, that, that were listed. Uh, some interesting things, obviously device name, you have the same thing on device manager. Uh, driver version and driver provider. Uh, Another a, a good use for that, and I had a customer, it's a hosting company, and they saw the demo of this command lab, and they were like, Ricardo, every time that I open a, a, a PS a product support services call with Microsoft about my cluster, they asked me uh, what are, if I'm running all the same uh, HPA drivers on every node, right? I have 16 node clusters. I mean, it's a lot of work, right? So then I said, hey, just, Use the tool, right? You can get information. Uh, also, if you are in doubt if you are using an inbox driver or the OEM driver, uh, the driver provider can tell you that. Uh, as you can see, most of the all the drivers here are the inbox drivers. Some interesting things. Uh, if the device has a problem, let's say the driver did not load it, then that's the bang when you open device manager and you have the exclamation mark. Uh, you have a property has problem uh, will be true on that case. Uh, and then uh, regarding the hardware topology, there are two columns, uh, two properties: new and old, and UI no good. And remind uh, what I said about naming. My naming skills are very basic. Uh, so uh, new and old is pretty obvious. This is basically the new and old that a given device is closer to. UI number is actually the physical uh, slot number. And the reason I use UI number is that if you look at the ACPI spec, because of all these uh, plug-in play discovery information come from the ACPI uh, uh, infrastructure. And if you look at the spec, that's how the ACPI spec uh, mentioned uh, mention that too. So I just you know, uh, decided to be consistent. And you may be asking, okay, Ricardo, why you have uh, a, you know, basically all the devices uh, on the same slot as same new and old. These are all uh, onboard devices, like keyboard, and, and so they usually on that particular machine they they live on the same uh, uh, physical locality. Locality. I'm going to bring a more co comprehensive list so we can see uh, all the uh, uh, the details. But pretty much this is a PowerShell view of device manager. So now you have exactly the same information you have on device manager. And, and keep in mind that I select some, some properties. These are not the properties that are available. <coughs> Actually, let's take a look of, on what type of properties I expose for each device. So, uh, the, the, the device properties, basically, I have a, a common set of properties uh, that are the ones you usually will see uh, on the UI. 
So if you look at the UI and you know right click properties, uh, most of the properties on these pages uh, are exposed uh, by default. So driver information, driver version provider, device name, device location, parent and sibling, which means that uh, parent and child. So you can basically create a, uh, a tree view of all, all the devices. Uh, the locality information, Numa node and, and, and slot number, and, and also available properties. So the fourth, uh, the fifth property from top to the bottom. Available properties is actually an array of all the plug and play uh, properties, which are around like 100 and something. Not all the devices expose all the properties. So then, if, the, if a given property you are looking for is not here, you can inquire the available properties and that will basically dump everything that the plug and play uh, subsystem knows about that device. Does it make sense so far? Any questions? No questions? Okay. So, uh, another interesting um, thing is. Uh, we have uh, the control options parameter, uh, and basically control options tells the command led to the enumerate the devices that are actually installed and available on the system, or enumerate all the, the devices. The difference of that I'm going to show right now is, so remember, uh, when I first run the get device with the manager object, we had 297, I think, devices. And now we have 302. Actually, uh, these extra devices are devices that are actually not present on the system at this point. But that's, at some given time, uh, the driver was installed. Uh, An easy, uh, uh, easy way to see that your laptop, every time that you plug a USB stick or, or a a, a, any USB device, and you remove the device, the driver is uh, installed and will, will stay installed. So basically the hidden device properly tell, tells you every possible device that was installed during you know, the lifetime of this OS installation. Uh, so if you want to figure, figure out if in the past you had a particular game installed or particular driver, uh, this uh, can um, tell you that. And there is a uh, comparable functionality on device manager. And I keep switching back just to, you know, so we can uh, use device manager as a baseline. That's the show hidden devices option. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> what we can also do is we can enumerate devices of a given class. I don't know if you guys noticed when I when I run, ran get device and manager object, it took a while, basically, you know, it was an in 300 and something plug and play devices. Maybe you don't want to do that, or maybe you were actually just looking for a specific type of device. Uh, for that, there is a uh, device class uh, argument on this command lab uh, where we can pass a uh, given uh, device class. And again, naming. Ricardo is not good at naming, but actually this was extracted from the platform uh, header file. So, you know, if any day you are talking with a developer, uh, you guys will be talking the same way. So, the nice thing about writing your own command lines is that you've got to choose uh, all the names and everything, right? You are the master of your own universe. The downside of that is that other people will look at it and say, okay, how come you came with this name, right? Uh, okay, going back to the UI, just so we can have a you know a more comprehensive view. Uh, so these are all the needs I have, and let's look at the. Actually, you guys remember that top picture I mentioned the three different I/O hubs, and I asked you know uh, which NIC that particular um, which is what that particular NIC was. So uh, this is one of the 10 GB names on that, uh, on that picture. And uh, I can see that the NIC is closer to Numa node 3. 
and we start to his lot number three. And there are some things like, you know, PCI, uh, MAN, port 40. If you search for the, the hardware ID, you can do things like uh, an if file. When you download your driver package, the driver package has the driver itself and an if file. The if file is a text. It's a text file. And we all, or okay, I'm assuming that we all did that, but I wanted that someday you face that device that you had no idea which driver to use. Okay? Assuming you have the drivers and the in files on uh, on a disk on a or on a share. You can actually search the in files for the hardware IDs, and if you get a match, that in file match that device. Boom, you just automated the, uh, the uh, way to find drivers. Okay. But as I, may, I mentioned before, uh, at first you may look at this property and say, okay, why I need to know this? Uh, actually, you know, you don't for most part, but that is correlation of some areas, device installation. And also, especially the hardware topology, the new malware as a Kari, which can give you some uh, performance improvements that I'm going to just touch a little bit uh, in a few minutes. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, no questions. That's actually a uh, pretty good event. I'm going to assume it's good. Okay. Um, let's look at uh, another thing here. I mentioned about the available properties. So if a given property is not what, what the, the command lab exposed, you can always query the available properties and this is a raw sample of all the properties. Uh, the same view as you have on device manager when you go to the third tab, okay, there's a there's that uh, combo box where it's called. Okay, good. Let's see what else uh, we have here. I, 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 I mentioned how uh, there's a correlation uh, between the this information that the command lets are exposing and other areas of the system. I'm going to share both these slides and also this uh, PowerShell script, so you know we can look at later. But I, I just coming out some of the correlation and, and where you can find that uh, where where you can use that. I'm going to give one example. Uh, who is familiar with RSS queues testimonials? Receive side scaling? Receive side scaling queues. Okay. Receive side, side scaling is a feature since 2003 uh, that basically uh, improves the performance of the network stack by uh, <coughs> receiving uh, requ multiple simultaneous requests. Uh, RSS queues uh, improves that further. Okay. If your actual uh, name supports that. Okay. On the RSS stack, you can also affinitize a specific name to a specific processor. The reason for that is you have the PCIe slot, the PCIe slot, or PCIe slot. Yeah, no, PCIe. Anyway, connects to an I/O hub, and that I/O hub may connect to different human nodes. Now, <laughs> if you know where your process is running, in which of the human nodes, you can affinitize RSS in a way, as I mentioned in the beginning of the session, you can specify that the RSS stack runs on the same uh, logical process, uh, the same physical processor as your process that is consuming network. So then you don't have cross node uh, process because <coughs> on, on a multi node system, every time that you cross one from one node to the other, uh, you have, in some cases, some performance impact. Uh, one typical example of this is IIS, Internet Information Services. That is a way 
uh, you have the different application pools on IIS. So IIS or Windows Server 2012, you can admit eyes to a specific normal. Do we expect that everyone is going to do that? No. You probably, maybe you will never have to do this. But all these large scale boxes with eight, 16 sockets, we know this uh, performance improvements, home screen performance improvements by just doing the application. How you do the, the automatization? There are different ways. So one of the ways is the pre-Windows Server 2012 way uh, is registry keys. Okay, so there is a registry key. And now, just bear with me. I'm kind of going away from the device manager and, and just showing a uh, an example of how we can use that information explored by device managers uh, to some something else. So that is a registry key for every name. Uh, and that registry key controls the, the RSS behavior. This is pre Windows Server 2012. In Windows Server 2012, this got uh, way more easy. But anyway, I'm going to start with the hard way. And I'm not, not going to go into the details of this, but basically what I'm doing is uh, I'm, I'm doing a, a I'm scanning uh, this registry key here, looking for uh, the value of instance ID. Um, that I got from the command lens uh, prior. So let's see. And if I found that registry key, I just dump the registry key. Okay. So uh, just did a search on the registry to a specific instance ID, and all these keys are tied to that particular name. So if we look down here, this is an Intel uh, gigabit uh, name. And you see things like star RSS, and there are some other properties like star Luma Luma. Okay, This is the pre-Windows Server 2012 way. Obviously, things improve a lot, so you don't need to uh, use the register anymore. And what you can do today is get Net adapter RSS. Okay? And, and, and what uh, this will, will give you is a bunch of information that I'm not going to go into details right now. But you have base processor, max processor, and, and max processors. So this is basically the Luma community table. Uh, you can tell the network stack to open the device to look at that processor. And in the past, you, you would have to go to device manager, look at every detail, write down, create a spreadsheet maybe, and perform the changes. Today, you can use get device. Okay? So this is pretty much it in terms of listing devices. Now let's uh, interact, interact a little bit uh, with uh, the devices by disabling something, for example. So let me bring device manager here. And I'm going to try to disable the CD ROM. The reason for that is, in the past, for this demo, I used to disable the NIC. Uh, now, it's not very smart. <laughs> Obviously, I, I was always you know, cautious about disabling the NIC that I'm not, I was not connected to, but it's not worth it. So trust me. It works for a CD-ROM, CD it works for an ink, for an HPA, for anything. Or, almost anything, some devices don't, don't allow to be disabled. That's a, a, a different subject. Okay, so, uh, you know, I have my CD-ROM here, and what I'm doing, I'm just listing all the devices and searching for, you know, part of the, the CD-ROM name. And before I execute this, uh, we can see that the device is enabled. Usually when you disable a device in device manager, you have a down arrow. So and let me rearrange the screens here. Okay. So let's execute the thing here. And it's hard to see. But there's actually a down arrow, a down arrow uh, here. And also, if we right-click, there's the enable option, right? 
right? So yeah, we can disable the device head. One, uh, one uh, usage of this is, in, our, in, in my data center, we usually, we always wire uh, the first NIC to the first port, second NIC to the second port, and so forth, right? And usually, let's say a customer runs servers, with, our servers I think, have usually four NICs. If the customer runs in production only two NICs, for example, what we do is we disable the other two just to reproduce the customer environment to the extent we can. It's easier than actually a plug-in device, right? Uh, so that's one example uh, where you can use this capability, okay? Uh, we also have uh, this command let's also uh, give you the ability to install a driver. <coughs> And I'm not going to show that because I have drivers set up for all the devices already. Uh, but that's a, a, one of the command lines is install device drive. Okay. And, and basically what this command line does is it receives a, as a parameter um, a .in file. It installs this .in file in the driver store and uh, refresh the plugin play stack so if the device is there already, it will uh, install the driver. Talking about driver installation, another usage example of this command lens. Okay. So, uh, I mentioned before that if you have, you know, your in files and, and you don't know which device that in file belongs to. What you can do is uh, you can use, you can query for, for the device, and you can either use the device name, but if the device is not installed, which, you, which is likely the device won't be installed, uh, won't have a drive installed, you will search for a device with the flag has problem. Remember when I did, uh, when I executed that device the first time, there was a property called has problem. So you run the query through and you search for has problem equals true. And then uh, you get the hardware ID and you execute a search on the in file. And if the in file contains the hardware ID, you are lucky. So let's see how that works. I'm using a NIC that already has a driver. I have the right driver on the folder. Uh, so this is more, you know, to illustrate that. So the driver is here, and uh, there is a new file in this directory. And what we are going to do is just run this guy. Okay. And what happened? Uh, I have a select string statement. Uh, it just opened the in file, it found the string, and you know, if you found the string, you can use that in file. That's the driver you want to install. But there are some gotchas here. Obviously, this is a demo, and this was scripted and everything. We like to play safe. Uh, you can see that I use, so hardware ID is actually a collection of hardware IDs. You have the compatible ID, you have the actual ID. So that's why I'm using like one on this collection, uh, because the first one, is not going to be on the file. Trust me, it's not going to be there. Okay. Anyway, the, the, the goal here is not to uh, teach you how to use in files, just to uh, you know show one example. Again, I'm going to sh to uh, share this script so you can take a look at yourself using the bits to make things more mm -hmm. right. Okay. So we did uh, device. Uh, we listed the devices. We enable and disable. I show some correlation with things like uh, drivers and mobility. Now um, another piece that I want to show you, which is to me maybe the coolest feature. I don't know. Uh, it's very simple. I don't want to set high expectations, yeah. but. Uh, I mean, we, I'm, I'm a geek, right? So I like to see the test manager and know that even though I only use half of a logical processor, having 160 is cool. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I only use half, but. So anyway, uh, one of the command lines get Numa, and this is, very, this is really a work in progress. Uh, but the idea is that eventually this will uh, report 
all the processor and, and, and capability and, and, and in one single place, and also buyers. Okay, what we, what we have so far is uh, this is a NUMA system. Okay, uh, so if you have a multi cell system, it will tell it's true. If I run the same command on my laptop, it will say false. Uh, the type of hardware, if you are running BIOS or UEFI, you report that. The number of NUMA nodes, the number of K groups. How many of you are familiar with K groups? Trust me, you don't have to, okay? <laughs> you don't have to. But uh, sometimes you may need that information. So if you ever, if someone ever asks you, how many K groups I have on this server? Run my command let you get the answer, okay? Um, the number of uh, processors, and you guys are looking at this, 40, and I'm like, okay, he has 106 cores, I found a bug. No, you did not found a bug. Uh, this is basically the number of processors per K group. Okay, I have actually four K groups because a K group is zero base. So four times 40, 106. I know, you, I mean, user, user in a, uh, UI, user experience is not my thing. You can know this. Many, you know, zero base properties. But anyway, eventually this will be improved to really report things like the capabilities, the instruction set on the specific CPU you were running, and things like that. Things that you today you see, for example, using core input, which is an amazing tool. Um, logical processor mask is just a big mask that shows for every NUMA node which processor belongs to uh, which node. And firmware tables, okay, uh, what is this? Basically, it's all the content, contents of your firmware BIOS or UEFI. This is passed to the OS uh, by the firmware. And this is a read-only view of what your BIOS or UEFI is. Um, where you can use this, uh, not everywhere, but let's say that uh, you are not sure why your server is running on a C state that is different than uh, the power settings you, you, you configure for. Or, uh, you know, when you create a, a, a power profile, uh, you still see some CPU spark. Who knows, maybe the firmware is configuring a, a different C state than what we're seeing. So this firmware table is basically, it's a binary view of all the bio settings. Ricardo, how, how can I read this? You need to know the ACI spec, sorry guys. So, I mean, not, not like super useful, uh, but I just wanted to share because the information is there. And for a really a troubleshoot scenario where you really want to dig down there, uh, the information is here. And um, if you are like me, that you grew up with peaks and pokes on an 8 bit computer, remember that time? If you poke the, the, uh, the wrong uh, area of the memory, uh, the machine will reboot. That was fun. Okay. You can just, you know, print uh, the contents of the file on the screen. Okay, very, not interesting at all, but uh, the information is there. Uh, again, uh, this is a uh, working uh, in progress. Uh, this is a side project. I try to get it into that, you know, on and off. Uh, it really surprised me, the number of downloads. I have a very steady number of downloads, which you know, I, I never expected. Uh, so, if you found, if, if, if you think that this session was useful, if you like it, what you saw, uh, please download the command lets. And actually, I'm going to uh, post the location of these command lets on the screen. So, download the command lets. And not only that, uh, provide me feedback. Okay, you can uh, download the bits from the gallery tech map, and it's a blog post uh, where I, you know, go into some details. 
of how this was implemented. And uh, again, I'm going to share these slides uh, today so you'll be able to download them later today. And please uh, look at the command lines. Uh, if you find it useful, send me an email. Uh, my email is uh, ricardoweb at microsoft.com. Let's move to the next slide. And just shoot me an email and say, you know, Ricardo, I found this really useful and I could, this would help me on uh, X, Y, and Z. Okay, uh, your feedback, it's something that I definitely uh, will put forward. So that's what I had. Uh, I actually have, you know, a few more slides that I'll leave I'll as reference on the slide set so you can look at later. Uh, at this point, uh, if there are any questions, uh, I will hang around. Uh, again, thank you for being here, watching my session, and not going to the other building. Ricardo, can you go to the next slide again? To the previous slide, yes. And, and uh, a huge thanks to the folks organizing the event and allowing me to speak. Uh, it was really a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. <laughs>